don't even I don't even know who to yell at for starting without letting us know. Hey everybody, I'm Kyle Rizdal. Welcome back to Make Me Smart. Making today make sense is what we do on this podcast. Or attempt to at least. I'm Kimberly Adams. It's happy hour, or as we like to call it, economics on tap. Thank you to everyone yes. joining on YouTube, on Discord, in the podcast, wherever you may roam. Uh, and we're just really grateful that you're here. Yeah. Yeah. And I will say it, it feels a little weird to be doing this because I haven't been on a Friday in like a couple of weeks. And so it's nice to be back. That's all I'm saying. Yes. All I'm saying. With your drink. What are you uh, drinking? I, I am drinking a, a uh, Mind Haze double IPA because uh, I need a little, I need to take the edge off a little bit because uh, it's been mm -hmm. a day. Uh, Is that like a stronger a beer than normal beer? I go to. Yes. So double IPAs are generally higher in alcohol content, alcohol by volume. This is 8.3. Um, and one would do me very well for the meeting that I have coming up in half an hour that I don't really want to have to deal with. Um, and so that's good. That's good. That's My good. wine what about you? is 13.5% alcohol by volume. There you go. It's black girl magic. Is that the name of the wine or is it? Sorry. Yes, it's actually called Black Girl Magic. It's legitimately okay. called Black Girl Magic. <laughs> it could have been. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yes, I will embrace all it in all of its all forms, right. in the wine <laughs> and in my reality. Uh, oh my goodness. All right. We uh, we all just play a little drinking? game we call half, wait, wait, half we full, half empty. Drinking. Yeah, let's, let us see. We got okay, a Bloody we got Mary. A pomegranate we got martini. Uh, oh my goodness. We got a lot of stuff. Uh, let's see. Pomegranate martini, uh, Bloody Mary. Let's see. Coconut pineapple, sparkling water with Malibu rum. Okay, Robert, I see you. Nicely done. Wow. Nicely wow. done. I, I just want to point out we have somebody in Belgium listening at 1230 in the morning, which is kind of awesome, actually. Reno de Calouet. That's awesome. Ooh, and That's I love awesome. that Kay is drinking, drinking hot chocolate soda stream with peppermint H2O. schnapps. I should say, um, oh Kay, goodness. I seriously considered having that exact drink, hot chocolate with peppermint schnapps, but decided I was too lazy to actually heat anything up. So, Ginger beer with vodka, gin and seltzer, hot tea in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Nice. Ooh, 7 to 12 inches of snow for Emily Kittleson. Holy goodness. Emily. Emily, Emily Oh, Emily. and Monica's in Welcome London. It's 1130 there. Thanks, Monica. Wow. All right. Okay, now that right. I've we've we've officially surveyed the drinks news. Yes, well, yeah. you know it is it is coming upon us. Um, okay, so I am bringing this up uh, number one because I just kind of love it, but also because number two, Marielle mentioned it like a week or so ago. The cream cheese shortage in New York City, the schmear shortage, and what that's doing to the bagel industry and just you know all of that jazz. So Bloomberg did a little digging, and I love this so much. It turns out that a company named Schreiber Foods in Wisconsin, which has, according to Bloomberg, a cream cheese operation to rival Kraft's, which is to say large, right? They were the victims of a cyber attack back in October. And that partially goes to explaining why there was this cream cheese shortage. Because honestly, when Marion and I were talking about it, I was like, come on, how can you be short of cream cheese? How can you, how can that be? But I guess that's the, I guess that's the mantra of this, of this uh, supply chain age is how can that be? Anyway, so they had a cyber attack and that's what's going on with that. But here's the other amazing tidbit in this Bloomberg story. I'm just going to read it. At home cream cheese consumption is up 18% compared to 2019 and food service demand in November was up 75% compared to last year. Now, granted, last year we weren't going out, but still, that's according to a spokesman for a uh, spokesperson for Kraft Heinz. Some of us. We're, we're eating a we lot of cream pandemic. cheese is all I'm saying. We're just eating a lot of cream cheese, which is just cray cray. That's that's what I'm saying. I'm really I hesitant know. about whether to comment on this because I always, I always get in trouble for this. Um, I don't like cheese. Oh, no, that's fine. I didn't like cheese for a very long time. And now I do. No, but so like, fine. I've lost friendships over this. Like, people oh, really like get disturbed when cheese? they just... <laughs> I mean, like, I just don't like cheese. And once people find out that you don't like cheese, they just look at you differently for some reason. Is it... <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I don't know what to do with that. Is it all kinds of cheese? All kinds of cheese. 
it's really a shame because I'm, as I'm sure people have told you, cheese and wine go really well together. <laughs> I know. I know. I've heard this. I've heard this. And I have tried wow. many, many different kinds of cheese over the years and I don't wow. like it. And okay. one of okay. my good friends from like middle school, I've known her since I was like an early teenager and she's actively suppressed the fact that I don't like cheese. So every so often she'll be like, oh, you should try this new cheese. I'm like, I don't like cheese. She's like, all right, well, over and over again. Issues. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. She's got some issues. She needs to, she's the one who needs to get over it. I, you, you do you. Wow. Yes, okay. As Clear Roger degrees. says in the live YouTube live. chat, chocolate and wine is a better combination. I'm fully That's on very board true. with that. That's very true. And ooh, this ooh. is the all Finn, Finn has the questions. Yes, I know. Yeah, what do I do yeah. about pizza? Yeah, what do you um, do? well, I either eat like the worst pizza possible that doesn't have real cheese. It has like the vegetable oil stuff that is oh, God, kind of like really? cheese and that is fine for me or i'll take the cheese off of it or i'll just eat a very very small amount okay and uh, sorry <laughs> i'm i'm okay now i'm digging in has it been this way since you were a kid yeah yeah okay all right okay <laughs> hey as somebody else said in the youtube that's great more for us more for us yes you know? Yeah. So, I mean, everyone loves Ooh. cheesecake and it's just like, it still tastes kind of like cheese to me. And I'm just like, eh, no, thanks. Oh, that's my favorite dessert ever is my wife's cheesecake. <laughs> my wife makes the world's <laughs> best cheesecake. It's my favorite dessert. Oh, ever. Does she? Uh, okay, yeah, she good. really does. Um, but mm. uh, you're not going to get any. So nah, 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 nah. <laughs> all right. Anyway, go ahead. let's get on with the news. We're off track here. I'm sorry. Okay. So um, mine is uh touch more serious but also you know what let's That's make right. a let's make a very um let's see loose tangential connection cheese health healthcare your heart and arteries this is about let's drug go. prices which is that the um house of democrats just wrapped up this three year investigation into drug prices in the US and basically determined what we all kind of suspected, which is that several drug makers kind of use the United States to rake yeah. in profits by hiking up prices in the US while charging everyone else in the world lower rates. So we're just sort of the profit center because wow, Medicare yeah. and, and the federal government can't negotiate drug prices. Now, obviously there's a political agenda to releasing this report at this time when we're in the midst of the Build Back Better negotiations and, and they want to give the government the power to negotiate drug prices in some cases. Um, but yeah, I mean, I can't tell you how many people I know who like when they travel abroad, they bring back all of these medicines that are just so much cheaper. Now, mm -hmm. at the same time, the Republicans released a report talking about pharmacy benefit managers, which are sort of the in-betweens mm -hmm. between the pharmaceutical mm -hmm. companies and patients saying that they're to blame for high drug prices. Lots of blame to go around. But this report is super detailed. It was like, I think it went... Um, three years for this report that they've been digging yeah. into this yeah. the i'm just going to read a piece from um, reuters um the report which focused on 12 drugs made by 10 companies said that lily novo nordis and sanofi owned some 90 percent of the market for life-sustaining insulin which was invented in the 1920s and this is one of the drugs that's really had its price hiked up and that it's pretty much just us that's yeah. paying yeah. these kinds of rates well, and yeah it, it, yeah i it's so, so the thing that has brought it home to me most immediately and recently are the are the at-home COVID tests right you, you go to the to the local piggly wiggly in london or you know edinburgh or wherever and you get them free at the local uh place because of the National Health Service. And here they're like 40 bucks for two. And it, yes, fine, there's going to be reimbursement through insurance, but come on, cut it out. Um, it's craziness. It's crazy. Crazy. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, I also <laughs> have something that I think is going to be near and dear to both of our hearts, which is a okay, space story. Um, oh, you look. Sorry, clicking. Which I don't know quite how I feel about it. Um, so the FAA mm -hmm. said today that it's no longer going to be giving out commercial astronaut wings. 
which oh, was I, I, you and I have had this conversation, I believe. Go ahead. Go yeah. ahead. I have a stance so, on this. I have a position. Okay. So they gave these astronaut wings, I think, to all of these dudes who've gone into low earth low earth orbit, not actual space, but kind of sort of space, but they still got the astronaut wings. Go ahead. Yeah, so it's not low earth orbit, right? It's these it's these little suborbital hops that they've been doing. It's mm -hmm. the Bezos is going up and down, right? Mm -hmm. It's not orbit. Yeah, but right? it's not that, space. That, I, right. It's not. That's exactly it. It's not space. It's popping up, doing the parabolic arc, and coming back down. It's exactly what Alan Shepard did in 1961. Right. Watch the right stuff. You know exactly what it is. And I think actually you shouldn't get astronaut wings until you orbit. I think that's the deal. I think you have to go. You have to orbit the Earth. And then you come back and th then you got the wings. If you pass the Carmen line and all that jazz, BS. You gotta go, you gotta go up and around, not just up and down. I don't know why I feel so well, strongly about that. But now nobody's Sorry. getting it anymore. Um, because yeah. apparently too many people are going up into that thing that you just said, uh, the little right. hop. And so now the FAA is no longer gonna be giving out astronaut wings to these commercial pilots. And Yet another one of our dreams has been crushed, Guy. I'm, I, I, th I think I'm okay with that. I think I'm okay with that. You know, I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm uh, look, I finally accept that I'm not going to be an astronaut. I can be an Apollo, you know, fanboy and all that jazz, but <sighs> my flying. I'm not, I'm not ready to, I'm not ready to give up. I think, I think there Kimberly. may still be a, a, a moon Kimberly. byline for me I, coming I, out. I am I am I am saying this as gently as I possibly can and know that I love you, but there's an age limit. How old do you think I am, Kai? I, I this could be Careful. this could be deeply problematical for me to answer. <laughs> so I'm not so, so so I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. <laughs> but but no, but come on. Okay. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Let's just. Okay. I'm gonna save you from yourself at this point. Mm. <laughs> I think we have a. I think we have a some other things to say. Oh, so we'll do that on another podcast, shall we? Anyway, so um, look, uh, we're gonna take a very brief break here to do this, which is to say, um, we cannot do what we do on this podcast, whether it's get me in trouble, or discover that Kimberly <laughs> doesn't like cheese without your support. Um, this is New Investors Week here at Marketplace. First time donors get your gift matched dollar for dollar. We've been through all the nuts and bolts about, you know, we're looking for first time donors so that we can get you and, and help you show your appreciation for what it is that we do. Um, and if you can this week, it will be matched dollar for dollar. And, and look, help. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, look, a little over 200 folks have already had their gift match this week. So thank you for that. We really appreciate it. We're trying to get to 350 people by midnight on Saturday. I absolutely believe that we can do it. I have faith in mm -hmm. y'all and, you know, who knows, maybe I'll even eat cheese. Um, and then if you step up, you can help us make the most of this investors challenge. And right. that will help us bring more uncomfortable moments for Kai that entertain just everyone, <laughs> which we all love so much. You can go to marketplace.org slash give smart uh, or click on the link in the show notes. Again, that's marketplace.org slash give smart. And if you are in a position to give, we would really appreciate it. And thank you in advance. All right. I believe Drew Drastad is on the line. I, I, I want to believe. There we go. Okay, half full, half empty is the game. Our thoughts and red. feelings on various topics. Well, look, I mean, there was some peril in that last, you know, minute and a half of this podcast. <laughs> Drew Jostad is the guy who does this with us. Drew, you there? Please I'm help around. save me. I have all a right, good. special all holiday, half full, half empty, but I did not add mm. sleigh bells to the music. That's, that's my bad. That's all right. I, I opened my curtain so you could see my decorations today. I oh yeah, to... look, lots of love for that spiral staircase already, I'll tell you. Your first topic is increased holiday delivery hours from the United States Postal Service, including starting at 6 a.m. and on Sundays, half full or half empty. Wow, 
so I guess I'm half full for the consumers of America. I'm, I'm half empty for the postal workers who have to do that. I also think it's of note that Louis DeJoy, the Postmaster General of the United States, has recognized reality and knows that there's an extra burden this year. That's where I am. Same, but also half empty on finding enough people to actually make that work. Oh, yeah. Um, I have talked to a couple of people who work with the Postal Service, and they were talking about the just full on effort they're making to try to recruit people to work to for the Postal oh, really? Service. In oh, that's this. so interesting. Yeah, because they need like hundreds of thousands of people, Mm -hmm, not just mm -hmm, for the holidays. mm -hmm. And and apparently one of um, the things that they're telling them is, is that, look, you know, yes, there's the holiday work. But if you, you know, can get a full time job with the Postal Service, you know, that's a long term job with benefits and, you know, pensions and all of these other things. And so I'm I'm not getting the exact details of the offer. Right. But the point Mm -hmm. being that a lot of the jobs that are being offered around the holiday season are for temporary jobs that end. And one of the ways that the postal service is trying to pitch itself is that this is a job. Yes. We'll hire you for the holidays, but there's more of a long-term track and there could be a career. Right. Hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, look, I, I feel like one of the things that we've learned in the pandemic is that we need to be mindful and respectful of what we're asking other people to do. And Mm -hmm. Do we really want to be asking our postal service workers to kind of kill themselves so because we mailed our packages late? Eh, I don't know. Yeah. I'll just try to get my stuff out. Six in the morning is tricky. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Next, Drew. Half full or half empty on the return of office holiday parties. Hmm. Kimberly? Half empty. Those things were always fraught. I mean... They, they, I, they're a little painful and they're kind of fraught. Yeah. And risky. And especially in this era of me too, and people saying inappropriate things about race all the time. I don't know that you need to mix alcohol into that. And I love my colleagues and I'm happy to see them, you know, at a restaurant and we hang, we, I, I do hang out with my colleagues and folks are awesome. Um, but I, these big organized holiday parties with a lot of booze and a lot of food and spending when you're not giving your employees raises. Eh, I feel like I can pass on that half empty. What Kimberly, what Kimberly said. I'm down with that. Okay. 2021. As we sit here drinking together. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's right. 2021. But, but separately. Uh, Go ahead was a record was the record year highest year for uh feature films and tv movies related to christmas and the holidays half full or half empty on holiday movies all the way full (laughs) all the way full Hmm. i have spent many a day binge watching holiday movies back to back to back the more formulaic the better I love it and I enjoy it. My mother loves it. We'll be on the phone like, which Hallmark movie are you watching today? I don't know. Which Lifetime movie are you watching today? Just um, not last night, but the night before, I participated in my annual ritual where basically everyone in my family at some point in the holiday season watches this particular version of The Christmas Carol. I think it's called Uh, I'm not sure if it's called Christmas Carol or a Christmas Carol, but it's a 1970 version with Albert Finney and it will be watched by just about everybody in my family at some point this season. I watched it the night before last full on full on holiday movies. That's so funny. So two things. Number one, I've got a I've got a friend who writes those Hallmark, some of those Hallmark movies, and he starts like in in Thank April you. and and it's a huge portion of his income and he kind of loves it. And I'm like, you go, man, whatever. Number two, Die Hard is a Christmas movie. And uh, number three, uh, if it's not Phil a wonderful Schaefer life, it's the same thing care. in the YouTube chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yeah. a huge fan of It's a Wonderful Life. It feels like a little bit of a downer to me <laughs> i mean no, I get, it's an economic I, I christmas I, movie I totally so i guess yeah it's on brand for uh, us I, I'm, I'm a i'm a i'm a jimmy stewart fan but anyway uh all right drew what yeah. else you got half full or half empty on the return of the rose parade mm. ambivalent 
Yeah, if you're not in LA and specifically in Pasadena, which is vaguely where I am, I don't know why you would care. I personally, I mean, it's a big deal around here, right? I mean, the, my local town and local towns around put huge amounts of civic energy into the Rose Parade. Um, uh, and it's super fun to watch. And when my bigger boys were little, I would pop them on my shoulders and we would walk a block and a half up the street and watch the parade go by. But otherwise, you know, meh. I mean, it's cool, but meh, you know. I, I I'm, see I'm my opinion hat. on this to Drew. You're in California. What do you think? Oh, I should have been ready for that. <laughs> I really have the same ambivalence over here, though, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, unless you're, no joke, unless you're in within short driving or reasonable walking distance of Colorado Avenue in Pasadena, you, you should have no opinion other than I'm going to watch it before the football game starts. Truly. So no one watches the footballs. Well, yes, that's a whole different thing. I mean, you know, Utah, Ohio State, who cares? But anyway. Okay. I'm going to alienate all the Utah fans. <laughs> Before you do that, Mariah Carey's Christmas hit, All I Want for Christmas is You, this week uh, became the first holiday song to be certified diamond, half full or half empty on that song. All the way full. She deserves it. Uh, she does. Um, I don't love that song, but props to her for writing it and, and making it happen. There you go. I'll go with that. My niece was at my house the other day and confessed and that she also did not like, she's 11, okay. perhaps right. 12, Fair. bad auntie moment here. Um, yeah, well, whatever. she confessed that she also does not like that song and incurred the wrath of everyone over 30 around her. And we forced her to do a sing along. And by the end of it, she liked it. <laughs> Speaking of bad auntie. Yes. You will sing. Yes. You will sing. Many now. of us anyway, attempted to sorry. hit the notes. It was entertaining, I must oh, yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah. All right. There we go. Oh, my goodness. That was it. We're going out of Mariah. That's fine. We can go out of Mariah. That's yes. Uh, spe speaking of Mariah and the season and the holiday, we are taking a break uh, for the next couple of weeks back with new shows. Mark your calendars, January the 10th. Um, in the meanwhile, drop in some of our favorite deep dives on your podcast feeds. Look out for those starting next Tuesday. Otherwise, we are back in 2022. Enjoy yourselves, your family, and and whatever it is that you do uh, this time of year. But, but mostly, honestly, just unwind. That's what I'm going to do. I'm yeah. just going to unwind. You know? Good for you. Yeah. And, and yeah. I hope that folks take care of themselves. You know, like... Yeah. Uh, yeah. We didn't expect to be here this time last year, where we are. Yeah, yeah. So just be gentle with yourselves and your families and, and, and take care. And if you want to get in touch with us while we are on break, you can still do that. You can send us an email at makemesmart at marketplace.org or leave us a voice message with all of your holiday feelings and things uh we are at 508-827-6278 or 508 you be smart oh, my goodness. <laughs> today's episode of make me smart was produced by marissa cabrera and marque green it was engineered by the wonderful drew jostad the senior producer is bridget bodner I can do anything. The team behind the YouTube live anything. stream today and our game Half Full, Half Empty is Mel Rosenberg and Emily McCune. The theme music for Half Full, Half Empty, see what I mean about it? he can do everything, was Drew Joss, dad's work. And the director of On Demand is Donna Tan. Just got in under the wire, Donna. If we'd run out of music, I would have just not had been able to say your name. No Ooh. love for Donna. God, yeah, happy I, holidays, I Donna, everybody. But, but, but yeah, take care of yourselves. We're back um, in the new year.